Good morning, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and be glad in it. God has been faithful to bless us to see another Sunday morning. God did not have to do it. God was not obligated. God did not owe it to us. But I know you, like me, are so glad that God has blessed us to see another day. And here we are at another opportunity to worship our God together in spirit and in truth. No matter how you are joining us for worship this morning, maybe you're connecting on Zoom, maybe you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, or maybe you've accessed one of our websites. Hey, we're just glad that we get to worship together this morning. So saints, come on, prepare your hearts. Get your spirits and your minds ready. It's time for the saints of God to worship.
hands there. Yes, sir. We bless you, Lord. Your grace is to be praised. Yes, sir. Hey, come on. Just worship him because he's a great God and great to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord, let's go here. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. And here I am to say.
as thankful for this dynamic worship ministry as I am that consistently ushers us into the very presence of God for it is certainly in that presence beloved that we find everything that we need it's in that presence where the righteous are able to run in and know that they are saved it's in the presence of God where we get to be made whole. Because of what they have done for us in this moment, our spirits are ready. They are ready to exercise the divine gift that we have and talking to God in prayer. So, beloved, it's prayer time. Let's pray. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. 
calls us from a world of chaos, bids us to our Father's throne, makes all our wants and our wishes known. Amazing, wonderful, loving God, we, your children, have come into your presence this morning, God, and we are so thankful for the gift and the privilege and the honor it is to come before you knowing that that's how you identify us. God, of all the things you could call us, you make the decision to call us your children. So God, your babies have come before you this day, God, and we do not come empty-handed, but our hands and our hearts are full of thanksgiving. We are thankful because you are still our God. We are thankful because you are still merciful and morning by morning new mercies we still get to see. We are thankful because God, you have never left our side. We are thankful that God, you are consistent in looking beyond our faults and meeting every need. God, if we had 10,000 tongues, we really would still not have enough to express thanks for each and everything that you have done. In fact, God, your blessings are so vast that we really cannot number or name them all. We are simply grateful, God, that even in moments when we do not recognize it or see it, you're moving on our behalf. Thank you. Glory to the Lamb. We thank you, Abba Father, that our best interest is always on your mind. God, in ways that only you can, you demonstrate your steadfast care and love for folk like us. Lord, help us. Folk, God, that if we're honest, we've made our fair share of life's mistakes. God, help us. If we are honest, God, we have not always done what you have asked us to do. God, help us. If we are honest, we have rebelled against your love and we've rejected your law. God, help us. We're not perfect. But you make the decision to love us anyway. And what a gift it is to be able to worship you this day in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you that you keep on meeting us in worship. Glory to your name. We are so grateful, Holy Ghost, that nothing has been able to interfere with the movement of your spirit in our lives. And no matter where we are this day, of old that you have made and kept to us is that lo you will be with us always Woo. God that's good news this morning because if we are honest God we took you some places you never should have been but we are grateful that you stuck in there with us oh God you have always been through so now here we are, God, and it's another Sunday. But God, it's one that we have never seen before. And when the day comes to an end, we will never see it again. So won't you, sweet Savior, as only you can do something for us this day. Spirit of the living God, won't you please fall fresh even in this moment for the one oh God that you've called by name for the one that you have assigned to break the bread of life this day we ask oh God that you would undergird him with preaching power as he breaks the bread of life to your children 
May we who feast at your heavenly banquet, may we who get to sup at that table that never goes empty, may we who are invited into your holy presence leave knowing that we will never be the same. So now God, come by here. Stop by our homes. Stop by our cars. Meet us. No matter where we are in God, we will be ever so mindful, careful, thankful, and ever appreciative to you. For we recognize you to be exactly who you said you are. You are our Savior, our Redeemer. God, the truth of the matter is you are everything and you are all that we need. We ask this this day. In the name of Jesus, the Messiah, the promised one, our friend. God, thank you for friending us. You are our friend and we are grateful. So we ask these things in your name. Together, the people of God, lift up your voice. A amen, amen, and amen. The word of God comes to us this day. The gospel according to Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse number 36. The word of the Lord says, as they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your heart? See my hands and my feet? It is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate before them. And he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. Beloved, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. After the music ministry of Gethsemane blesses us immensely one more time, the next voice that we will hear this day is Pastor Ronald Triplett. Come on, saints, prepare your hearts, get your spirits ready for what God has for you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He's an awesome God. The train of his robe fills this temple with glory. We call him majesty. We call him sovereign God. We call him savior. He's righteous and redeeming. He's amazing. Why don't you worship the Lord with me? Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. I worship. 
you, O King of kings and Lord of lords, your majesty. We honor you today. We bless you. We declare you King of kings and Lord of lords. You are Lord. You are Lord, and we give you glory. We give you honor, and we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O God. Hallelujah. We worship your name, O God. We honor your name, oh God. Holy, holy, holy is your name, oh God. Your majesty. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, your majesty. Hallelujah. We bless you, oh King. We bless you, oh Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty bless you. Mighty God, we love you. Mighty God, we bless you. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Grant us the wonderful words of life. Send your word here yes, and bless us. Send your word here and help us. Send your word here and heal us. Do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Grant to this your servant clarity of thought, conciseness of speech, and the anointing that destroys every yoke. Touch your people here. Give ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a will to obey. We thank you in advance for what you will do among us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank God. Said every knee shall bow, every knee shall bow. Oh, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture today has been so eloquently read by our pastor, Michael Parker. We thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for the spirit of the Lord. Uh, thank God uh, we give honor to God who is the head of my life. Give honor to all of you, you and you, God's people. We thank God for Gethsemane, the place where I serve. We thank God for Journey. I serve you too, along with my colleague, Pastor Michael Parker. We thank God for him. And uh, So let us thank God for his leadership. Can you just clap your hands all over this virtual sanctuary? Give God praise for my brother. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us look to the word of the Lord. Uh, it's already been read, but I just want to lift up two verses of Scripture, two verses of Scripture, uh, verses 52 and 53. They worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy, and they were continuously in the temple praising God. Friends, um, this month, we began the month talking about prayer. In fact, our worship theme this month is when God's people pray. The last time we talked together, you and I, we talked about what happens when we pray. I read to you and the, the author Richard Foster spoke to us through his book, The Celebration of Discipline, and we, we quoted uh, Richard Foster as saying, prayer is the central avenue God uses to transform us. Foster says, in prayer, real prayer, we begin to think God's thoughts after God, to desire the things that God desires, to love the things God loves, to will the things God wills. Progressively, we are taught to see things from God's point of view. We talked about what happens when we engage in the act of prayer, both individually and collectively. Uh, we talked about the fact that when God's people pray, we align ourselves with one another. When God's people pray, God aligns us with God. We align ourselves with God. And so uh, we understand that what happens when we pray, but today I want to take another aspect avenue as we talk about prayer, and I want to talk about communion. I want to talk about communion. I want to talk about going further and deeper with God in prayer. I want to talk about communion. Now, uh, before you all think uh, that this is Communion Sunday, it is not Communion Sunday. I'm not speaking of the sacrament of communion. I'm not speaking of bread and wine or the liturgy or the first Sunday or anything like that. When I'm speaking of communion today, communion with God, I'm talking about intimate fellowship or rapport. Now, if you can recall, I quoted the great theologian and mystic Howard Thurman the last time we talked together. And I said, uh, Thurman said, when the hunger in a man's heart merges with what seems to be the fundamental intent of life, communion with God, the creator of life, is not only possible, but urgent. It is so important. Communion is so important with God. Communion goes past a prescribed formula of prayer. 
communion, intimate fellowship with God supersedes a list of requests. It goes beyond words. It extends beyond the scope of our thoughts and of our imagination. Communion with God in a space, it brings us into a space in which one senses the intangible. Communion with God brings us into the space in which the manifested presence of God is experienced. This manifested presence of God is both individual and corporate. In his book, Discipline of the Spirit, Thurman says, once the interference that drowns out the hunger has been stilled or removed, real communion between man and God can begin. Slowly, the hunger begins to stir until it moves inside the individual self-consciousness. And the sense of the very presence of God becomes manifest. The words uttered, if there be words, may be halting and poor. They may have to do with some deep and searching need of which the individual now becomes acutely aware. The experience of communion with God, uh, 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 Thurman talks about in his book, uh, the experience of communi communion with God can elicit various kinds of responses. It could elicit intercession, it could elicit praise, it could elicit adoration, celebration, or thanksgiving. Those are just to name a few. And so when one comes into the manifested presence of God, there's something about it that goes beyond words, when, when you experience the manifested presence of God in your prayer time, in your private moments, you uh, it goes beyond, you just cannot explain it. In fact, you don't have a lot of words in that time. It's just blessed quietness. That's, that's why the hymn writer, I believe, wrote blessed quietness, holy quietness. Oh, what assurance in my soul on a stormy sea, Jesus speaks to me and the billows cease to roll. It, it is that, 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 that feeling, that, that experience that goes beyond words that is in the manifested presence of God where real communion can take place. Now, the outcome of this prayer, the outcome of prayer, the outcome of communion with God is stronger faith. It can be clearer vision. It can be correction. It could be direction, strength, courage, or wisdom. Uh, the outcome of prayer, communion with God, could be the will and ability to serve. You don't just pray and do nothing, but you come out of prayer willing to do more, willing to, uh, willing to do what God has told you to do, finding what, you, what more you can do to fulfill the will of God. And not only that, but the result of communion with God can result in the individual having powers uh, to do that, the works that are beyond what they thought that they could do. The effects of prayer can be limitless when you just tap in uh, to find real communion, real intimate fellowship with God. We noticed in the Gospels that there are various times when Jesus slipped away to pray. For long periods of time, there were even times when the disciples had to go find Jesus because Jesus was away so long. The text also said that it was his custom to withdraw and to pray. That suggests that it wasn't just an every now and, a, a now and again thing, but it was a regular occurrence. Now, what resulted from this time in prayer is his unique ability to impact those who came around Jesus in a great way. For example, forgiving sins, healing the sick, raising the dead, welcoming children, including 
including the women, the ministry among Gentiles, raising up the next generation of leadership. And there are more teaching thousands, feeding thousands, being a source of wisdom, confounding the Pharisees, inviting those who have been out on the margins, inviting them in to God's to God's inner circle. Those are all the things that are uh, that are the results of Jesus spending long periods in prayer. All of this begins for Jesus in prayer. Now, while in today's text the disciples were not praying so much, we, don't, we did not read about the disciples praying, the text does give us a clue about what happens when the manifested presence of Jesus comes in the room. Y'all ready to go to the text today? Can I talk a little, uh, can I talk a little bit about the text? All right, God bless you. Come on, let's, let's look at this text a little bit. Uh, Luke chapter 24 is the last part of Luke's gospel account. Um, verses 1 through 12 has been preached on in these last, uh, in, uh, among these last few, a few weeks uh, as we've talked about the different aspects of the, rev- of the resurrection. The next part of this chapter describes two disciples who were on their way going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they were talking about things that had happened regarding Jesus' death bear- and death and burial. Uh, and so these disciples were walking, uh, and, and the Bible says that a stranger came up and began talking with them. And they said, have you not, where have you been? Have you not heard what's going on in Jerusalem? Uh, the, the, what's going on with you? And so this stranger began to talk with them and began to reason with them and began to illuminate their minds. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he began to illuminate their minds. And so they did not realize who this stranger was uh, until he sat down uh, and he broke bread with them. I told y'all Jesus ate with his disciples. Uh, y'all go someplace with some, some people of God and sit down and find yourself a piece of fish and a piece of bread and some mustard and mayonnaise and sit down and let's break some bread together. And so they did not know who Jesus was uh, until they sat down with him uh, until he broke the bread and then they realized uh, who he was. Uh, they realized who he was. Uh, he disappeared, but these disciples couldn't hold it to them with themselves. They could, not, they could not keep it to themselves. So the scripture says that they went back to Jerusalem, back to where the others were. They said, it is true. Um, we have seen the Lord. Uh, and they started to tell what happened to them uh, on their way to Emmaus. They started to tell uh, about how Jesus talked to them. They started to tell um, about how Jesus... Uh, how Jesus reasoned with the scriptures, uh, reasoned the scriptures with them. They started to talk about that. Uh, and the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that while they were talking about it, uh, Jesus appeared into the room. Uh, isn't that something? Uh, isn't that something how you can be talking about Jesus? Um, how you can be talking about what God has done for you? Uh, how can you be talking about the things, that, the experiences that you've had with God? Uh, and somehow you sense the presence of God seep into the room. Uh, Somehow you sense the presence of God all around you. Uh, Yes, that's what happened in this case. Um, Jesus appeared, uh, but it wasn't wasn't just the spirit of Jesus. Um, It was his body. Jesus physically appeared. Uh, And the Bible said that they were startled and they said, he said to them, peace uh, be with you. Peace uh, be with you. And so we realize that that peace that Jesus was giving them was a blessing. It was a comprehensive peace. Uh, Peace with God, uh, peace with one another, security, uh, blessing, uh, peace with you. Uh, Then he asked, why are you so startled? Uh, Why are you afraid? Now remember he had appeared once before at this point. so uh, they should know that it, it, it really is Jesus. Uh, but he asked them, why are you so, why do you have doubt in your heart? Um, listen, friends, um, sometimes God can move on your behalf. Sometimes God can be moving, uh, but yet on the inside of you, uh, you still feel a certain kind of way. Like, is this really God? Uh, is this too good to be true? Uh, is this my imagination uh, running away with me? I, I really don't know. 
Uh, sometimes you can have doubts in your heart. And so that's what these disciples, they were, they were in the experience. Uh, but it was oxymoronic uh, because they were experiencing the presence of God. Uh, they were happy that Jesus was there, uh, but they could not believe this was happening. Uh, they could not believe that this was going on. Uh, yes, I heard it just now, sweet God. Uh, for some of you, uh, God is going to blow your mind. Uh, yes, some of you have been praying for some stuff. Uh, some of you have been waiting for stuff to come through. Uh, God is going to bring it through right easy. Uh, God is going to bring it through just effortlessly. Uh, and God will blow your mind uh, in such a way that you've got to have to step back and say, is this God? Uh, is this too good to be true? Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, yes. Now back to the text. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus appeared uh, and he showed them uh, that he was real. This was not a ghost. Uh, this was not an apparition. This was not a figment of their imagination. It is me, Jesus is saying, uh, in the flesh. Uh, and then Jesus ate some fish. Uh, he got to, uh, here's, another, uh, here's another example uh, where Jesus is sitting with them and eating. Uh, it's something about eating. Uh, eating breaks down barriers uh, that people may have. When we sit down and eat together, uh, when we sit down and fellowship together. If the food is good, that's one thing we can agree on. And if the food is nasty, that's one thing that we can agree on. However way it goes, if the punch is good, that's one thing we can agree on. However, if the punch is too, too sweet or too weak, that's one thing we can agree on. Eating breaks down barriers and allows people to connect on another level. Well, the Bible says... That Jesus took a piece of baked fish and he ate it. He gave them proof that he, it was real, that this was real. I heard the songwriter say, there are some things I may not know. There are some places that I may not go. But there is this one thing that I know, that God is real and he's real down in my soul. Yes, God is real. He's real real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real. For he, God has washed and made me whole. His love for me is just like pure gold. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Jesus gave them proof that he was indeed real. And then Jesus talked to them as Jesus sat down, took time and talked with them. Jesus gave them or did three things for them. Jesus gave them illumination. Look at verse 45. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says in verse 45, these are my words. Oh, excuse me, verse 45, he said, then he opened up their minds to understand the scripture. Scriptures. Uh, Jesus illuminated. Isn't that something? Uh, this is the second place where we see uh, Jesus illuminating, opening up their minds. Uh, sometimes uh, the answer could be right in front of you. Uh, sometimes uh, what you're searching for, uh, what you're looking for, uh, what you're trying to figure out uh, is right in front of you. Uh, and it takes God uh, to open up your mind, uh, to illuminate you, uh, to give you wisdom uh, about a certain thing, uh, to give you wisdom uh, about God's word, to give you wisdom uh, about God's God's plan for your life. So Jesus um, illuminated them. Uh, the second thing that Jesus did, uh, Jesus spoke to them. Uh, in verse 48, uh, in verse 48, Jesus said, uh, you are my witnesses. Uh, you are witnesses of these things. Uh, and so Jesus, Jesus uh, told them uh, who and what they were. Uh, I've talked to you several times uh, about the fact uh, that amidst in this time period, uh, and Jesus positively affirmed, the, affirmed his disciples. Uh, if you follow Jesus, uh, Jesus said, uh, you are the light of the world. Uh, Jesus said, uh, you are the salt of the earth. Uh, Jesus said, uh, you are forgiven. 
forgiven. Jesus said, you are healed. Jesus said, you are blessed. He goes on to say through Paul, you are more than a conqueror. He goes on to say through, through others that you are provided for. You are, you are, you are all that God has called you to be. And here Jesus said, you are witnesses of these things. And listen, in that identity, in that identity that Jesus gave them, that their mission was tied up in their identity. Because for them to be witnesses of these things, that means that they were eyewitnesses. They now had the responsibility to go and share what they had seen. They now had the responsibility to go tell somebody about this Jesus. Yes, he gave them identity. And then the last thing that he did in verse 49, Jesus said, Jesus said, look, I'm sending you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. Jesus gave them illumination. Jesus gave them identity. And also Jesus gave them instruction. Somebody say instruction. And in, 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 in that instruction, God, God, Jesus gave them a sense of direction. They weren't just an aimless hang out in Bethany. They weren't just aimlessly just walk around and just go fishing and go this. No, you got the instruction to go to Jerusalem and wait there until you have received what the Father has promised. In this text, he did not say what the father had promised. So that was a little, that was not clear. But stay there and wait because something is going to happen. Stay there and wait because the heavens will shift. Stay there and wait because just as sure as my name is what it is, I cannot lie, nor can the father lie. Yes, yeah, so stay right there and something is going to happen. The the Father is going to send you something. Jesus gave them instruction, and in that instruction is a promise. Now, after they had this time with Jesus, after they had communed with him, after they had spent intimate fellowship with him, the text says that he led them as far out as Bethany. He lifted up their hand, his, his hands, and he blessed them. And then after he blessed them, Jesus ascended. Today is what we call Ascension Sunday. It is when we recognize and we acknowledge the, the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge the fact that he now sits on the right hand of God the Father. So our faith says. And so the Bible says that Jesus, he physically left them. He physically ascended into heaven. Now, I, I find it interesting uh, that their, their, what their response was. Um, their response to uh, their communion with the master. Uh, their response, as Thurman likes to call Jesus, he calls him the master. Uh, their response to their time of intimate fellowship. Uh, their response to the time of intimate conversation uh, is that of obedience, uh, was that of joy, uh, and that of worship. Uh, where do you see that, sir? Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, the Bible says that they went to Jerusalem. Uh, they did what Jesus told them to do. Uh, and then while they went to Jerusalem, uh, they weren't confused. Uh, they weren't bewildered. Uh, they weren't dumbfounded. Uh, you don't read where they were still afraid or frightened. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that there was overwhelming joy. Uh, overwhelming joy. Uh, overwhelming joy. Overwhelming joy. God can give you joy in the midst of your sorrow. God can give you joy even though it does not make sense. God can give you joy even when it does not seem fair. God can give you joy when it seems like you've got the short end of the stick. God can give you joy in the midst of pain. God can give you joy in the midst of grief. God can give you joy in the midst of all kind of hell breaking loose. 
on the press of, on the front and on the back, on the left and on the right. God can give you joy, overwhelming joy, joy that you cannot explain, joy unspeakable and full of glory. I heard the hymn writer say, oh, the joy he gave to me when I knew that I was free, when my Savior found me, put his arms all around me, all oh, the joy that came, that came to me. The scripture says that with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation. Joy. Somebody say joy. Joy that is a down on the inside. Joy that supersedes happiness but causes you to put a smile on your face, joy that gives you contentment to say, I don't understand why I'm here. I don't understand what's going on, but here I am. And Lord, if you got me here, then let's ride it out. Somebody say joy. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Good God in here. And so the Bible says that they had joy. They were overwhelmed with joy. And then the Bible says that when they got to Jerusalem, when they got to the temple, they were continuously, they were, when they got to Jerusalem, they were in the temple continuously praising God. Listen, communion with the master, communion with Jesus yields obedience. Communion with Jesus gives you an overwhelming sense of joy. And with that joy comes peace, by the way. And then communion with Jesus generates a praise on the inside of you. A praise that cannot be explained. A praise that cannot be contained. A praise that is all over you. Somebody say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Yes. And so they went to Jerusalem and they continued steadfastly, the Bible says in, in Luke. They continued steadfast in, uh, in Acts. The scripture says that they continued steadfastly in prayer, in communion with God. Now listen. This is where we're going to stop with the text. But I just want to tell you that in the text about 10 days later, something's going to happen. Pastor Parker is going to tell us some more about what happened and that after that 10 days. But listen here, in about 10 days, something is going to happen. Well, the question is, what about us? What about us right now? What about us? Listen, friends, today I want to invite you. Let's have communion. Today, uh, I want to invite you. Come on, everybody. Uh, come on in your personal life. Uh, come on collectively. Uh, let's have communion. Uh, do I mean, do I mean the Lord's Supper? Not at this time. Uh, do I mean gathering around and getting your communion elements out? Uh, not at this time. Uh, I, what I'm talking about uh, is that God is calling us uh, to deeper levels of communion, uh, deeper levels of intimate fellowship, uh, intimate conversation conversation, intimate time spent with God, intimate time that doesn't mean that you got to talk. It just could mean that you're just sitting there, just rocking back and forth. It could mean that you're just sitting there still in silence, just intimate time. Perhaps maybe you have a scripture that's going through your head that you're chewing on, that you're, that you're repeating to yourself. All of this is a part of communion intimate time with God. I believe uh, that God is calling us Gethsemane. Uh, I believe uh, that God is calling us Journey. Uh, I believe uh, that God is calling us Lower Prince George's County Cluster. Uh, I believe uh, that God is calling us, those of you who are worshiping with us, uh, I believe that God is calling us um, to deeper levels of communion uh, with God. Um, God wants to move uh, in a greater way for us. God wants to move in a mighty way among us. God wants to move for us individually and corporately. But we must put ourselves in position to receive. We must put ourselves in the place where we're aligning ourselves with one another. 
We must put ourselves in the place when we are aligning ourselves with God. And we must put ourselves in that place so that God can move. And we're in position to receive what God is doing for us. How many of you want greater anointing? Just put your hands up right now if that's you. How many of you want to be a greater impact in the community? Just put your hands up if you want to. How how many of you uh, want to be able to speak uh, and people be encouraged? Uh, speak uh, and things happen through your mouth uh, and through your hands. Uh, how many of you uh, want to fight for justice uh, and, uh, and be uh, impactful uh, in the community? Uh, well, it all starts in prayer. It all starts with deep uh, communication, uh, deep uh, communion with God. Uh, somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Say yes. Listen, if we take time to commune with God, that is to seek God in a deeper way, God will give us illumination. That means that God will show us the will of God for our lives. Am I talking all right in here? God will uh, give us an identity. God will affirm our identity. And listen, our mission is wrapped up in our identity with God. So God says you are blessed. That means that you're blessed to be a blessing. Yes, God says that you are healed. That means that you are healed to be a healer. Yes, sir. God says that you are forgiven. That means that you are forgiven so that you can forgive. Somebody say yes. I feel like talking for about 30 more seconds. Ooh, Lord, Lord. Yeah. So God affirms our identity in our communion with God. And finally, we will receive instruction. God will give us direction so that we can position ourselves to receive whatever is coming from God. Somebody say yes. Yes. So I want to invite you today. Let's have communion. Let's have communion. Let's have communion. Type that in to your, type that in on Facebook. Type that in on YouTube. Type that in to the chat box. Let's have communion. Let's have deep and personal and fellow uh, deep and personal and intimate fellowship with God I heard the hymn writer said like this have thine own way Lord have thine own way thou art the potter and I am the clay mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting Yielded and still, I like the fourth verse. Here's what I was trying to work my way to. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. I would like to invite and challenge each of us to spend some intentional time with God this week. And we haven't asked this. We've, been, we've had Bible studies. We're in a series on Monday nights. I invite you on Mondays, Monday at 12 noon with Pastor Esther Holloman, and then in the evening time with Dr. Kendrick Reaver. So, uh, so we invite you to join that. But I want to invite you to take some intentional time with the Lord. And I want to challenge us to do this during our prayer time. I want to challenge you during your prayer time to read Acts chapter 1, verse 14, and then Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. All right? I want you to read that and think about that. Meditate on that. Just let it just ruminate in your, in your mind. Let it just, let it just boil in, in, in your mind. Let it simmer in your head. Acts chapter 1, verse 14, and Acts chapter 2. Verses 1 through 13. I want you to focus on that, on those scriptures and focus on what God, how God will deal with you. You don't have to talk a lot. Just, just read it 
and be silent. I just, I want to challenge you to do that for at least 10 minutes a day. Can you do that? Can you try that? <clears throat> at least 10 minutes a day. Allow yourself to commune with God. Allow yourself intentional time. If we do this together, I wonder what God will do among us. If, if we do this together, if you do this in your home, I do this in my home, Pastor Parker does that in his home, and each one of us will just, just ruminate, just, just meditate on Acts chapter 1, verse 14, and Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And let us just, let us be open to what God will do. Spend some quiet time communing. Friends, let's have communion. Amen, amen, and amen. Today, you may, you may be watching and you may not necessarily have a relationship with God. You may not be connected to God or you may not be connected to God's church. Either one. But God is here for you right now. God is here for you right now. And God is so available to you. God is just as close to you as the, as the air that you're breathing right now. All you have to do is believe. Believe on Jesus. Believe that Jesus lived and died, was buried and rose again. One day he's coming back. If you believe that, let me lead you in prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I want to make you the Lord of my life. I believe that you lived, that you died, you were buried, and you rose again. And one day, you're coming back. With the little faith that I have, I reach out to you. I believe. Now I ask you, Lord, come into my life for the rest of my life. Be the Lord of my life. I receive you now as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you recommitted yourself to Christ, let me congratulate you and welcome you to the family of God as you have begun your journey of discipleship. If you want to connect with Gethsemane, if you want to connect with Journey, if you want to connect with the Lower Prince George's County Cluster, Pastor Parker and myself will be ecstatic to be your pastor. Just email us. You can actually, before you email us, you can put in connect. You can put that in to, you, to Facebook right now, to YouTube, or to the chat box. Just put that in and we'll, we'll reach out to you immediately. Or you can mail us, email us at prayer dot lower pg cluster at gmail.org that's prayer dot lower pg cluster at gmail.org friend welcome to the body of christ amen god bless you in jesus name beloved certainly i know your heart has been blessed this day as the man of God has challenged us to commune deeper with God. What a mighty challenge in a world where we find time to commune with everything and everybody else. God's instruction to us this week is go deeper in God. And so certainly we are thankful for the word and we trust that your life will never be the same. We will be excited to take the journey of faith with you as we continue to grow and as we continue to see what God has in store for us and how God will use us here in the lower Prince George's County cluster, we have a wealth of ministry opportunities that you can be involved with. In fact, we would love to have you be a part of what is going on here. And those opportunities to be in ministry with both Journey and Gethsemane are appearing before you now. And we invite you to connect with us. Come on, take the journey with us what God has in store for us. As always, we are so thankful for your consistency, for your faithfulness in giving, knowing that when we sow seed, God is faithful. Produce a harvest. We invite you to continue to sow your gifts into Gethsemane and into Journey Church. 
the ways and manners by which you may give to either congregation are also appearing before you today. And we invite you to use any of those uh, giving mechanisms by which to sow and to offer your gifts this day. Beloved, God has met us. Are you thankful? God has supped with us. Are you grateful? God has spoken directly to you. You ought to give God praise. At this time, Pastor Triplett is going to come back and offer us our benediction. God bless you, friends. I pray that you have been blessed today. And we have been glad. We were glad to have been together um, around this throne room of God. Amen. Listen, friends, get excited. Next week is our birthday. It's the birthday of the church. Next week is Pentecost. Here's what you want to do. Here's what you want to do. Gather yourself, gather your family, and do this. Put, a, put you on a party hat. Put you on some white, red, or some version thereof, white or red. Just go ahead and put on either white or red, and let's come together, and let's have a party together. Let's celebrate the birthday, the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church. Let us receive this blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine upon you. Lift up God's countenance and give you peace. The Lord bless you with the burden to pray, the burden to seek God's face in a deeper way. This is our prayer for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.